Well, one of the questions that's emerged in the first couple weeks of this class, uh, seemingly spontaneously and naturally, and that's great, uh, is very pertinent to the reading for this week, uh, Davis's uh, Thinking Like an Engineer. Uh, and the question that I'm referring to is the question of whether um, you can be a, a good engineer without being ethical or whether part of being a good engineer or an essential part of someone qualifying as a good engineer uh, is uh, being ethical and I would presumably following not only the, the principles of the NSPE code of ethics but the general principles of decency, morality, and ethics as most of us understand them or agree upon uh, to begin with. I think it's a fantastic question. Uh, it's, it, it's a great question not only because it's a, a question which is of course uh, pertinent to engineering ethics but it's a, it's a great philosophical question and one of the things I was struck by in the discussion, in the live sessions, and in the uh, weekly discussion boards is that it is the very question that uh, the philosopher Socrates, and we all know who he was, brought up, uh, or Plato had him bring up, it's complicated, you know, Plato wrote the dialogues, used his friend Socrates as a character. Uh, in the dialogue, the Mino, which is a very great uh, platonic dialogue, uh, and if it's not too long, and if you have a ch ever have a chance to look at it, uh, it, it it's wonderful, but but that, the, the, the question that, <clears throat> that, that starts, or one of the key questions in that dialogue is whether uh, ethics can be taught. And uh, one of the, uh, you know, the, the questions is, well, if we find a, a, someone who, who we consider to be an ethical person, if we can agree upon whether they are, are or were ethical, um, did they have success in, in actually teaching ethics to their sons? That was the the question that they thought was key, that is, that if a man was a good man, uh, then and he had sons, uh, it would certainly, we could assume that he would be very interested in, in passing that uh, virtue or goodness or, or, or ethics down uh, to his sons. And one of the things that Socrates pointed out was what a fiasco most... Uh, so-called good or ethical or even great men of Athens uh, had when they tried to make their sons good too. Uh, and, you know, this raised all sorts of questions. Well, did, were they ethical but they, could, they couldn't teach it? Or um, were they uh, not ethical because they couldn't teach it? You know, it, it raised these wonderful uh, issues in terms of what ethics was. Um, Socrates was committed to the idea that, that virtue or, or being good or being ethical was really a matter of what you knew. That is, that um, if you knew what ethics was, if you knew what the good was, then, then clearly you should be able to teach it. And a failure to be able to teach it was really an evidence that you didn't know what it was. And therefore, according to the idea that you know, being ethical was a matter of knowing what the good was, that you probably weren't ethical to begin with. Um, just as a little background there, that this question that we're asking about whether being a good engineer means basically being good in general, uh, it, it's a very, you know, it goes back, it's a very deep question in philosophy, and it, it, it goes back a long way. Um, now, this, this essay by uh, Davis, uh, Thinking Like an Engineer, uh, I, I'll just suggest that it uh, brings up a similar issue, or one that's very close to that general issue. What does thinking like an engineer mean? Uh, you'll see that you know, one of the uh, key questions that's brought up by the Challenger uh, case, uh, the Challenger disaster, really, one, one Challenger tragedy, let's call it, uh, is uh, the difference between thinking like an engineer and thinking like a manager. Uh, in fact, the person at issue, uh, Robert Lund, uh, that Davis more or less accuses him of, of, of failing as an engineer because he decided to think like a manager in making this decision to launch Challenger. 
uh, and that was really his that was his, his great mistake is that he should have been thinking like an engineer but he agreed to, to think like a manager. Now, uh, that of course raises the question uh, what it means to think like an engineer. And, and one of the first things that you see is that he rejects the uh, idea, and this is uh, on page, sorry, I'm looking at it now, page 152. Um, one of the, uh, the first things he rejects about uh, what it means to think like an engineer is is, is the notion that engineers are purely, um, that, that to think like an engineer is a purely technical thing. I'll, I'll read you the whole paragraph. And remember, this is the definition of thinking like an engineer that he's rejecting. He says, one explanation of the difference, and that's the difference between thinking like an engineer and thinking like a manager, stresses technical knowledge. Managers, it might be said, are tra trained to handle people engineers to handle things. To think like a manager rather than an engineer is to focus on people rather than on things. According to this explanation, and this is not his explanation, right? This is an explanation he will be rejecting. Lund was asked to concern himself primarily with best, how best to handle his boss, the space center, and his own engineers. He was to draw upon his knowledge of engineering only as he might draw upon his knowledge of a foreign language, for example, to help them communicate with his engineers. He was to act much as he would have acted had he never earned a degree in engineering. Uh, if that explanation of what Mason was asking of Lund seems implausible, as I think it does, what is the alternative? So, so clearly what Davis thinks is that to think like an engineer, to really to be an engineer, is not just to apply a technical or scientific knowledge. That is, I think it's clear. I'm, I'm not saying it's that, this, that, that he answers the question definitively. Um, but clearly, he's thinking about the similar question that, that has been raised in the, past, in the first few weeks of, uh, of this class, whether a part of being a good engineer is being an ethical engineer. Um, I think that there have been some suggestions, and I'm not, I'm not saying that they're wrong, uh, but there have been suggestions that you can certainly be a good engineer without being an ethical one. And what that seemed to assume to me was that engineering was really a, a technical mastery, uh, being the way that one could perhaps be good at chess uh, without being ethical. Uh, if you know Bobby Fischer, you know that it's possible to be good at chess and be a terrible person. Um, is engineering like that? <coughs> you know, you can be a good, uh, probably be a good mathematician and, and not be ethical. Um, so I, I don't know. I think it, 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 he does really raise the question, and certainly he is he's pushing us in a certain direction in terms of its answer. Um, you know, uh, this question. I mean, I've taught engineering ethics for a while, and and you know, like, what what would a what would a really uh, this is a question, what would a really good engineer who's not ethical be? And the, the answer to that always seemed to me to be a, a supervillain, <laughs> if you're interested. I know about comic books. You know the person who's a genius uh, in terms of technology, uh, but has no uh, sound uh, ethical outlook. Would that person be considered a good engineer? I don't know. So we'll get we'll get started this week on this essay.